Greetings everybody, this is Leviathan here and today I'm going to help you get a great head start when it comes to season 13 and the very first thing I'm going to do is warn you, warning, warning, do not complete your challenge rift for this week before the season starts. Some people may or may not know, hopefully it's you know pretty common knowledge at this point, but if you complete your challenge rift before the season starts and like say you were like I'm going to be savvy and not open it, it will not transfer over to be in your seasonal mail. So it'll still be a non-seasonal item. So what I recommend, let me back out of here actually, uh, is to make sure on Friday night that you open up your, you know, create your seasonal character right when it hits 8 p.m. Get ready to go. So this is my level one demon hunter, as you can see. And now once this is created, then go ahead and hop into the challenge rift. So that should secure for you. You know, the game knows you have a seasonal character. You'll be able to get that in your seasonal mail. And that's really important so that you can open the challenge rift for your seasonal character and get that great head start. And once uh, we show you the challenge rift and everything like that, we'll go into the details of why it's so important to utilize the challenge rift at the beginning of your season. So as you can see, this is a Condemned Crusader. It's not a very well geared one at all, but I have run through the challenge rift just to test it out a little bit and it's very doable. Even if you don't have great command of Crusaders, if you're not really into the whole Condemned Crusader thing, although it's a great build, really strong. And by the way, if you want to know more about it, I do have videos here on the channel, so feel free to check those out. I'll throw a link to a playlist in the video description, and you can get more Akan Condemned Crusader in your life, because it is a really beautiful and fun playstyle. However, for the purposes of today, I'll just show you what you need to know in terms of beating this challenge rift and quickly, getting it one shot. If you open up the skills, I don't know how many people know this, but you can actually then move around the skills on your bar. So if you like to have your horse on, you know, your one key or your Q key or whatever you rebind to, you can move these around here. So even though, yes, with challenge rifts, you are stuck with the skills that the original person had, you can get some uh, user friendliness by putting the keys in places that you normally might have them if you're familiar with the build. But in any case, this is, like I said, a standard Condemn Crusader. You've got Slash, you've got Condemn, Vacuum Rune. So that's going to be pulling stuff in on a little delay for the um, attack going off. Steed Charge for that movement speed. Uh, provoke with Too Scared to Run. That gets you some more Wrath back. Laws of Valor, Unstoppable Force, which is going to cut your Wrath costs. So, you know, it's uh, Condemn is a very greedy skill. It requires a lot of Wrath and you can spam it out quite a bit. So you want to cut down on that and get as much regen as you can. And then last but not least, Akrat's Champion with Profit. This gives you your cheat death. This makes you tankier. It's great. And you can see we don't have the indestructible passive. So this is kind of your way to stay alive if you get into any sticky situations. But uh, there are some things built in here to help you out. Heavenly Strength, standard passive for wearing a two-hander when you have a shield for Crusaders. Holy Cause for some more damage and healing. Long Armor of the Law to keep this law up a little bit longer. And then Finery, which is a great one that increases your strength for the sockets that you have in your gear. And speaking of the gear, I'll go ahead and transition over quickly um, and also show you what's in the cube here. So you can see you have a Blade of Prophecy. So you can see you're not wearing one, but you do have one in the cube. You have a Corrupted Ashbringer. You know, throw back to that item. A Leoric's Crown to help with CDR, even though we do have low level gems. And you can see that our CDR is not quite what it needs to be to have 100% uptime on uh, Akrat's Champion, which is usually the whole key to the Akan Condemned setup. And we only have four pieces of the Akan set as well, too. So you're only benefiting from the two piece and the four piece. So it actually, you know, you're not going to worry too much about having 100% uptime because you're not going to get your six piece bonus anyway. So that is what it is. You do have a Frider's Wrath. And really between the Frider's Wrath and having the Blade of Prophecy, you get so much of the multipliers that your Condemn is still going to hit like a truck. You're still going to destroy everything. So, you know, not having the six-piece wall would be nice, especially on the defensive end. It's not going to be too detrimental for you. And then a bunch of other random pieces to fill it out. The rings are just, you know, Puzzle Ring, Bull Kathos. I don't, you know, where these things come from, who knows? S of Johan, some redundancy on pulling mobs in. Uh, the strong arm bracers, which are activated by the vacuum rune of condemn So you do have a lot of power like I mentioned and you have in very low rank bane of the trapped only rank 9 I'm not even sure if we have a slow in here to activate that but so be it and then uh, The bane of the stricken at rank 34, which is actually really nice because it'll give you damage against the greater rift guardian Which is technically one of those points where condemned crusader is the weakest although at this difficulty It really won't matter all that much the only other thing we didn't talk about was the unity. 
and you can see that it's in the cube and it's also on your follower so that'll be useful for some damage reduction there although oh wow the follower can't die token is not here so <laughs> i wouldn't actually recommend this combination without that follower can't die token that makes it so that even when your follower is taking damage you're going to be taking some damage too since you're just straight up splitting it in any case this build is definitely you know in progress a work in progress but like i mentioned even though there are all these things working against us it's really not that bad so you can see you come in here it's a festering woods which is a great map one of the things that's a bit of a bummer with this uh, version that the person has is that you don't have uh, illusory boots so you can kind of get stuck in mobs and this is kind of the general play style is that you're going to be hitting your skills as they come off of cooldown so i kind of just like rhythmically spam them to some degree and that works out just fine. Um, you're gonna just pull in as many mobs as you can and get them surrounded. And then boom, everything just blows up. There is a power pylon, if I remember correctly, right here. So you can get that and do even more damage. If you find that you're gonna get yourself into trouble in terms of dying, you know, when you have your Akrets champion up, remember that you do have a cheat death worked into that with the Prophet rune. And then you also, of course, have your potion. The Templar might give you a heal. So just back out if you feel like you're gonna die and you don't yet have Akrets champion up. And, uh, and you can get that cheat death. And then there's a shield pal on here, which is nice. <clears throat> That'll actually help you out in terms of surviving a little bit more. And you pretty much just run this path. You saw I just hit that shield, and there were a couple of elites near that. The, this build loves trash as well, too. You can just pull in all the trash mobs and one-shot those. Um, the next part of this Greater Rift is going to be up here to the right. So you're pretty much just pulling things in. You'll stay well ahead of the timer as you just continue to kill things and progress naturally through the Greater Rift. Next floor, unfortunately, is a sewer. It's very straightforward, so there's nowhere to like get lost or miss a pylon or anything like that. So there's not too much that you can do besides just kill what's in front of you. But there will be a few elites here and there. And there's also a channeling pylon that comes along, which is nice because it'll reset all your cooldowns. Crusader is a very cooldown based class, so that becomes super useful. Get you know your uptime on Akrat's champion way up there, have unlimited wrath builds very nicely into what we're doing here one of the things that uh since this build doesn't run focus and restraint your um your generator doesn't matter as much it does give you armor so you know if you find that you are again a little too squishy for your liking then making sure that you keep up the stacks on your slash guard can help you get a little bit more defense but uh for the most part you're really just trying to you know keep moving forward keep condemning things pulling the mods Forward, 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 always forward. These guys are health linked, so we'll just get them all together, and then they pretty much kill each other. Get those orbs. And then I can tell you right about when you'll likely spawn the Greater Rift Guardian. There's going to be another pack up here that's a little deadly. These guys are a little scary, especially when you're out of Akrat's Champion. So as you can see, I'm just going to back up a little bit till I get it again. Now I have it get in here because they throw out these uh, arcane beams and as you can see they actually proc me there was also frozen underneath there so i would watch out for that pack that's a place you can die but even if you do die again you know it's not going to be that big of a deal here's that channeling pylon i was talking about so you grab that and now you can really just go you know you got your horse off cooldown pretty much all the time you're just going to be able to uh, get your condemns out as much as possible i try to avoid using the word spam because you really don't want to spam condemn it's very much a rhythmic skill it has a global cooldown on it and if you spam it it actually delays the dps that you can do with it so it's really worth it to uh make sure that you're kind of getting into that rhythm of it and if you're a seasoned veteran of condemn then you kind of know what i'm talking about but if it's your first time really dealing with condemn then you know don't worry too much about it but it's just a way to maximize the dps uh, we're going to be coming up to the end here relatively soon. If you spend more time on the first map, like my first playthrough, I was looking in every nook and cranny and killing way more uh, trash and stuff, then you'd be finished probably a little bit further back where we were. Um, but, you know, you can pretty much just get up to here. It's going to be a nice swath of stuff. 
and then you'll kill all this and then it spawns your Grey Rift Guardian. It's Binder, she's not that bad. She makes some adds which can help you uh, defeat her a little bit faster. I'm getting out of there of course because I don't want to complete the Greater Rift because I want to make sure I follow my own advice and do not <laughs> get that Challenge Rift cash before the season starts. So that's pretty much a playthrough of it. You can go back if you want to review what I was doing or anything like that. Or feel free to hop into the comments, ask me some questions on how, you know, Condemn works and things like that. I'm more than happy to answer. Crusader is one of my favorite class. Actually, it is my favorite class. Uh, Demon Hunter has been competing with it to some degree these days, but it is my favorite class. So now that you've got your Challenge Rift cash, you're probably asking yourself, well, what am I supposed to do with all these rewards that I got? Inside the Challenge Rift cash, you'll get 450 blood shards, a bunch of crafting materials like your reusable parts, your veiled crystals, arcane dust, 10 DBs, death's breaths, say that 10 times fast, and a nice amount of gold, 4 million plus gold at, at least. And with that, you can actually hop into the game, of course, on that fresh level 1 seasonal character, and there are a few times when you're leveling on your way to 70 that you want to utilize these resources. So at level 1 right away, you can see here on screen, I have the Season 12 Pocket Guide, which I'll put a link to in the video description, so check that out. It's, uh, created by one of the community members. Uh, we have a bunch of awesome people that create these great guides and things to help you best get a fast start at the beginning of a season. This still applies for season 13, of course. And this is essentially your level one gambling sheet. So for Kadala, you use those blood shards and you can see for each class, there are some pretty key items that you can get right away. You know, if you're a monk and you get those Rivera dancers, you're off to the races. That's a great piece to start with. And then say you don't want to carry that low level piece all the way to 70, then maybe you go for your cube and you cube the power and now you have that in your armor slot and you're still benefiting from that. So. Depending on which class you're playing, this will be more useful or less useful. For Demon Hunters, for instance, you're probably going to be eyeing that Hellcat Waste Guard to get your grenade damage up, and that can help you level a little bit faster. So, you know, your, your mileage may vary based on the class that you are. But we'll hop back into the game here, and I can show you another example of a way that you would utilize those resources, because, again, you have 4 million gold, right? You've got the Death Breaths. So you can level up Hadrig all the way to max, right? Get him all the way up to the highest level that you can train him up to, rank 12. And then that'll get you the ability to craft level 70 gear at any level that you are. So then you would want to go ahead, if you're a demon hunter for instance, and then craft up these bows. Get some nice two-handed bows or a two-handed crossbow, whatever have you. And then utilize that in order to kind of game the system a little bit. And what I mean by that is if you can get a bow that looks like this with a uh, secondary on there that has a crowd control then what you can do is uh, go to your enchantress and enchant the other secondary so leave the crowd control on there and then enchant this to hopefully get a level reduction so at about level 40 if you can get a max level reduction of 30 then you can have a level 70 weapon at level 40 and as you can imagine that's a lot of power to boost you through a bunch of levels really quickly at the beginning of your season um, the reason why you want some sort of crowd control as one of the secondaries is if you take this other bow as an example you can see it has uh, plus nine max discipline and then some monster kills grant experience then if you look at all the options that we can re-roll, yes, we still have the chance to get level requirement reduced, but then we have all these other ones clouding up the pool of potential outcomes for re-rolls. So that's why you want to just have one of those on already, the secondaries, so you can eliminate all these other options. It'll be much easier, potentially, to just get this, right? Such a smaller list. So that's pretty much what it'll be in terms of uh, helping yourself out with that fast start. Again, make sure do not do that challenge rift cash before the season starts. Create that seasonal character, hop in there, enjoy that condemn crusader, get the cash, hop into the game, gamble those blood shards, you know, play, 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 hopefully get some good items, and then at level 40, go ahead and try to craft up a nice usable two-hander for yourself, get that level reduction on it, and then race to 70. I hope that this video has helped you out. Let me know what you plan to do with the beginning of your season. I want to hear from you guys. If you have any questions, again, about the Challenge Rift, feel free to hop into the comments. I'm very much looking forward to, again, pushing off our uh, solo self-found Season 13 League. It should be sweet, I really hope. And, uh, you know, stay tuned on the channel for more videos. We're going to have lots of updates this week and, of course, as the season goes on. And you want to catch all those. So until next time, 
I'll be seeing you in all the familiar places. Peace!